Your Excellencies, fellow citizens, on this historic occasion, I am happy to welcome the foreign ministers of the countries which together with the United States form the North Atlantic Community of Nations. The purpose of this meeting is to take the first step toward putting into effect an international agreement to safeguard the peace and prosperity of this community of nations. It is altogether appropriate that nations so deeply conscious of their common interests should join in expressing their determination to preserve their present peaceful situation and to protect it in the future. What we're about to do here is a neighborly act. We're like a group of householders living in the same locality who decide to express their community interests by entering into a formal association for their mutual self-protection. The nations represented here have known the tragedy of these two wars. As a result, many of us took part in the founding of the United Nations. Each member of the United Nations is under solemn obligation to maintain international peace and security. Each is bound to settle international disputes by peaceful means, to refrain from the threat or use of force against the territory or independence of any country, and to support the United Nations in any action it takes to preserve the peace. That solemn pledge, that abiding obligation, we reaffirm here today. We rededicate ourselves. Within the United Nations, this country and other countries have hoped to establish an international force for the use of the United Nations in preserving peace throughout the world. Our efforts to establish this force, however, have been blocked by one of the major powers. In this treaty, we seek to establish freedom from aggression and from the use of force in the North Atlantic community. This is the area which has been at the heart of the last two world conflicts. To protect this area against war will be a long step toward permanent peace in the whole world. There are those who claim that this treaty is an aggressive act on the part of the nations which ring the North Atlantic. That is absolutely untrue. The fact we are determined that they shall not happen again. In taking steps to prevent aggression against our own peoples, we have no purpose of aggression against other peoples. To suggest the contrary is to slander our institutions and defame our ideals and our aspirations. The nations represented here are bound together by ties of long standing. We're joined by a common heritage of democracy, individual liberty, and rule of law. These are the ties of a peaceful way of life. In this pact, we are merely giving them formal recognition. With our common traditions, we face common problems. We are, to a large degree, industrial nations, and we face the problem of mastering the forces of modern technology in the public interest. To meet this problem successfully, we must have a world in which we can exchange the products of our labor, not only among ourselves, but with other nations. We've come together in a great cooperative economic effort to establish this kind of world. We are determined to work together to provide better lives for our people without sacrificing our common ideals of justice and human worth. But we cannot succeed if our people are haunted by the constant fear of aggression and burdened by the cost of preparing their nations individually against attack. We believe that it is possible for nations to achieve unity on the great principles of human freedom and justice, and at the same time to permit in other respects the greatest diversity of which the human mind is capable. For us, war is not inevitable. We do not believe that there are blind tides of history which sweep men one way or another. 
In our own time, we've seen brave men overcome obstacles that seemed insurmountable and forces that seemed overwhelming. Men with courage and vision can still determine their own destiny. They can choose slavery or freedom, war or peace. I have no doubt which they will choose. The treaty we are signing here today is evidence of the path they will follow. If there is anything certain today, if there is anything inevitable in the future, it is the will of the people of the world for freedom and for peace.